What if you were able to freeze your body and come back 10 years, 100 years, or even a thousand years from now? What if you or a loved one was given the worst possible news that you had a very short time to live, but you could do something about it? Would you do it? Now, this sounds like something that we've seen in so many different science fiction movies, but what if I told you that this is something that is really happening today? Yes, people like you and I are going into cryo sleeps with the possibility of being reanimated sometime in the future. When I came across this reality, I had so many questions. I did a lot of research and honestly, I was shocked. Before I get into the details and the facts, let's talk about some of the individuals that are doing this. Some of them serious heart conditions, serious cancers, people that knew that they were going to die soon. And like many of us today, they tried everything that they possibly could to prolong their life. I want to live forever and ever. I love life. This is Anita Riskin from California, who's being cryonically preserved in liquid nitrogen with hopes of being one day resurrected sometime in the future. Anita has a serious form of aggressive cancer that cannot be cured and will one day ultimately end her life. This is something that Anita wanted to do to possibly come back when science is improved and there's a cure for her available. And her husband, like many husbands, very supportive. In fact, the dude said that he's gonna do it too when he dies. That way they could one day be resurrected together. Now, where did this idea come from? To be able to free somebody and bring them back from the dead sometime in the future. Well, it all started with animal hibernation, which is necessary for some animal species to survive harsh conditions. You know, like a dreadful winter. Food isn't as accessible to them, and it's their way to survive. It involves a drop in body temperature, slow heart rate, and less breathing. Virtually no energy consumption. That way they're not burning any calories. You know, food. It's like a computer going into sleep mode, but way more complex. For example, a marmot during the winter can hibernate up to eight months, breathing two to three breaths per minute while slowing down their heart rate to three to four beats per minute. If you were to compare that to a human, I mean, that's almost like a half of beat per minute, okay? Marmot's heart rates are but wait, Omar, that's completely different. They're not completely frozen and they're not brought back to life during hibernation. Yes, but this is where the idea of a deep freeze sleep or cryo sleep came from. Humans do not hibernate. However, there is a little bit of scientific data out there in some scenarios where some people have hibernated, but only by accident. And miraculously, it did work, but nothing like this. Now, even if it was a thing for humans to be able to hibernate, we don't have fur like animals do. I mean, maybe some of us do. <gasps> Plus there's hypothermia. Hypothermia starts to set in when your core temperature of 98 degrees Fahrenheit, which is normal, and that's 37 degrees Celsius, drops to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius. And that's really not that much, right? And this can happen in cool temperatures, not freezing, which is scary, but unusual. Sub-zero temperatures, on the other hand, different story. Once your core reaches 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius, you're losing consciousness, and anything lower than that, you're done. Once your core temperature reaches below a certain level, enzymes in your brain start becoming weak, causing imbalance, and later on hallucinations from the deprivation of oxygen because the heart not being able to pump enough blood efficiently, while slowing down and eventually stopping completely. So if you're freezing a living creature or a human and trying to bring them back after thawing them out, perhaps the chances of them surviving, not too good. So you're saying there's a chance? Well, I don't know, but I'm pretty curious about it, aren't you? And I immediately turned to Google to ask this question. Has anyone been brought back to life after being frozen? I mean, frozen. During this curious moment, before I hit enter on my keyboard, and this was just for a split second. I thought to myself, I'm probably in for a letdown, but that didn't happen. No, this is terrifying. Supposedly there's tons of scenarios that I found of people that had some near death experiences after being frozen, like a lot. But here's the thing. Most of these people were technically still alive somehow. So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. Was there a scenario where someone completely was frozen, no breathing, and they were brought back to life? Yes. And this was fascinating. Justin Smith of Pennsylvania, and he was a young guy, about 26 years old or so, was out drinking, partying with a couple friends, and after his party, 
he decided to go for a walk. And it was pretty cold that night. Uh, actually, it was frigid cold. Negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 20 degrees Celsius. I mean, like, nobody's surviving out there. Well, he went missing throughout the night, and there was definitely a search for him. He was found the following day completely covered in a snowbank, unconscious, no pulse, no breathing. Body is frozen solid. Paramedics come out and actually put the sheet over his body at the scene. A death investigation underway. Yeah, he was pronounced dead when they bring him to the emergency room i mean it's a good thing that they ran into this doctor named gerald coleman dr coleman tried reviving justin's lifeless body and he was just getting nowhere all signs lead to lead us to believe that he's been dead for a considerable amount of time his thought was very simple you have to be warm in order to be dead and that kept him from giving up on Justin. Using an ECMO machine that warms, pumps blood, and provides oxygen, his heart miraculously started to beat. And this is after hours of him just arriving at the emergency room. Justin did need to go through some therapy. I heard that he ended up losing his pinkies from frostbite, but he made a full recovery. They said he was dead and frozen for over 12 hours. I mean, dude was a human corpsicle. Doesn't make any sense at all. You see, when the body is frozen, ice crystals are formed, which can pretty much destroy everything. Just think of it this way. Your blood in your veins turn to ice, and when they finally melt, you're going to have these little crystallized particles. How on earth did Justin survive that? And this has been the impossible task about freezing bodies and bringing them back to life. But what if there was another way that you can completely avoid these ice crystals from forming? Now, it's crazy to think that cryonics has been around for quite a while, and there's a couple companies probably really close to where you live and you never knew. And they don't just do it for humans, they do it for pets as well. That's right, you can cryonically preserve one of your dogs, cats, maybe pet rat. Oh, there's this company called Alcor in Arizona, same place where Anita is cryonically preserved, and many others, and I will talk about some of those others in a second. Some famous people too and they've been around since 1972. It's a long time, about 50 years. And one of the original founders named Fred Chamberlain is being cryopreserved there today. His wife, that's still alive today, plans to join him in the near future. My husband is in this doer right here. I come in every now and then and say, hi Fred, <laughs> how you doing? Now I did a lot of research and I wanna share with you how this process works. Well first, just like with any service, you gotta pay for it. And we'll get to how much it costs here in a second. Not gonna wanna miss that. Alcor does recommend their patients to live nearby. That way they can quickly be on top of the preservation process. Now this isn't quite as simple as just putting the body in an ice cube or dipping it in liquid nitrogen. No, there is a process. After a patient has passed away or legally dead, they're brought in and stabilized, and that starts with putting the body on ice, intubating them to restore lung function while bringing oxygen back to the blood. Then they use a mechanical CPR device, also known as a thumper, and that's to keep blood circulating and free from clotting throughout the body. After a short while, they pump all the blood out of the body and replace it with a medical grade antifreeze. According to them, this is probably one of the most crucial steps in cryopreservation. This is so important so the cells don't crystallize and cause damage. I mean, just think of it this way, 60% of our body is made of water. This medical grade antifreeze allows Alcor to slowly lower the body's temperature and they do it slow. And this is called vitrification, which is another very crucial step to cryopreservation. Now, no one tells the definition of vitrification better than ask the mortician. So let's see what she has to say about it. Vitrification is how cryonicists avoid the formation of ice crystals in the human body. If ice crystals form in the body, cell membranes are damaged, destroying vital tissues like those in the brain. Instead of creating a crystalline state, like with ice, vitrification transforms the body into a solid glass-like state. Alcor uses a vitrification solution called M22, while the Cryonics Institute uses an in-house solution. Both are basically medical grade antifreeze for people. And in an almost entirely glassy state, they are submerged in liquid nitrogen, where for several days, the temperature is slowly lowered to negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The actual process of vitrification is rather delicate and takes incredibly long. So like Caitlin said, your body is in this glass state almost like you're frozen in time. There's no crystallization happening at all. So yeah, now that we know that there's a way to avoid these ice crystals from happening, what next? Are we able to bring people back in the future? I mean, the thought of that alone is pretty terrifying. I mean, let's say that I were to make that decision to come back in the future. I mean, everybody that we know and love today will be gone. You're essentially waking up into a future where you don't know anyone unless someone that you fell asleep with is there with you. Just think about it for a second, okay? It's pretty deep. 10 years ago, if you were to wake up now and see what's going on, I mean, just in 10 years, this world has changed so much. Imagine that being 100 years. It hurts my brain. I think if people from the 1800s woke up today, they'd be like, kill me now. I want to go back. That's just my theory on things, but it could be pretty cool too in the future, flying cars like back to the future. Maybe at that point, we'll have some new alien friends here with us. So a lot of us baseball nerds know who Ted Williams is. There's the pitch to Williams, line drive base hit. Ted Williams a hit in his first at bat. He was one of the greatest to ever play the sport. When he died in 2002, it broke many sports fans' hearts. It was supposed to be private, but the word did get out that Ted Williams was being cryopreserved, and he's one of the famous names sitting at Alcor today. Now, we do have to get this straight. They're not really freezing the body. Global News did an exclusive interview with the CEO at Alcor to get a little bit more information on how this process works. Let's watch together. The first stage of the procedure, uh, we have to wait until the patient's been declared legally dead. We then move the patient from the bed into this ice bath, and we're going to cover them in ice and add some water. Obviously, we don't have that here, but we're going to use this device called the squid to circulate icy water around the patient. That accelerates the cooling, the external cooling. At the same time, we're going to apply a mechanical CPR device. It's much more efficient and less tiring than manual CPR and a respirator. First of all, we have to circulate blood around the patient. Otherwise, um, the heat won't get moved around and we want to get heat out of the brain especially. So we have to circulate that around. And also we're going to give a series of medications to protect the cells against damage. Uh, so we're going to stop the patient from returning to consciousness. Number one, we're going to stop the blood from clotting. I did hear about this too. He's talking about giving the body medications just in case they were to waken up from their death sleep and one of those medications is propofol anesthesia i mean because like who would want to wake up from their death much as you do when you're donating organs uh the one in the middle is uh, by far our youngest patient this is not sad quite three years old this is really sad a little girl from thailand who had brain cancer both her parents were doctors and she had multiple brain surgeries and nothing worked unfortunately so they contacted us and because they were actually medical professionals they actually set up an operating room in thailand and we could send a team out there and do the procedure we'd normally do locally when people talk about cryonics they often say well you guys freeze people and that's not really accurate because freezing really implies the formation of ice crystals and that's something we want to avoid because ice does damage to cells so we, we don't want to freeze the patient, we want to vitrify them. Once you cool very, to very cold below freezing, the solution, instead of crystallizing, will just get thicker and thicker, and it's like a glassy block holding all the cells in place without any internal structure, and so does no damage. And once we reach that point, uh, which happens around you know, minus 110 degrees C or so, um, once that's happened, the body becomes a true solid, and absolutely nothing is happening in the body. There's no biochemical activity whatsoever, certainly no neurological activity. So at that point, really, you could, it doesn't matter whether you wait a day or 100 years, you're going to be just the same as when you started. I remember I said that there's some options. Well, supposedly, you can have your entire body cryopreserved or just your head for a little cheaper. Now, I'm going to let the CEO tell you how much this costs. The whole body is a minimum of $200,000. Um, which if you look at the cost of open heart surgery is really pretty low. That's one way to look at it. Just for the brain alone is $80,000 and those are minimums. So $200,000 and you know, let me look. Okay, what does their website say? Now there are some members and patients and there is a difference, I'll explain that in a second, that choose to have their identity private and for good reason you know this is kind of a sacrilegious type thing that we're talking about very unique controversial situation here 17 dollars to 100 dollars a month if you're a member and supposedly there is a very popular member out there paris hilton 
I don't know if that is a rumor, but supposedly, according to some of the research I've done, she wants to be cryopreserved one day, and she is a member that is signed up for this. Allcore does have a frequently asked questions. Here we go, here's the cost. Most people pay for their cryopreservation through life insurance. Wait a minute, life insurance? Which is what makes cryonics affordable for the average person. $200,000 for whole body cryopreservation or $80,000 for neuro cryopreservation. Now that's not just, you know, them decapitating you and sticking your head in a glass like we would think they're actually taking your brain out but i guess it's cheaper and more eco-friendly so this is my question right here okay when will patients be revived when are they coming back let's click on that that depends on when they're cryopreserved the specific details on how well they were cryopreserved and how rapidly future medical technologies particularly molecular nanotechnology are developed eventually a time will come when human suspended animation will be perfected it will be possible to routinely turn people off and on for medical time travel space travel and other purposes what as progress continues it will then become possible to recover people who had been preserved at earlier times when methods were less perfect so greater degrees of injury resulted some think it will take centuries before patients can be revived while others think the accelerating pace of technological change might so rapidly transform our world that decades would suffice all court is planning for however long it might take in other words we don't have this technology today to revive someone that has been cryopreserved our best estimates are that within 50 to 100 years we will have the medical technologies needed to restore our patients to health and function power outage what if something like that happens and you got like hundreds of bodies that are being cryopreserved like what if that happens what if a earthquake happens if you're on the west coast and this is a natural disaster map that we're looking at right here and for those of you out there that are looking for the perfect place that doesn't have any natural disasters or has very minimal ones scottsdale arizona is your place um you can see here uh florida yeah that's like dark shaded of course los angeles is too also they have generators so i mean in the case of a power outage they wouldn't need to worry i still have my fears behind that like you pay this company all this money and what if they go bankrupt are they just gonna turn the lights off and leave these bodies to thaw my question for you is let's say you were diagnosed with a life-threatening illness and the doctor gave you so long to live or maybe it's a family member of yours maybe it's a child like the little girl that's being cryopreserved today at all court she's the youngest patient would you see this as a way to prolong your life maybe put your life on pause a sleep mode or like many others do you just accept your fate and die robert edinger known as the father of cryonics once said this everyone wants to go to heaven but nobody's in a hurry to get there i am still somewhat skeptical but hey Maybe 10 years from now, we're gonna start seeing some of these bodies coming back to life. Even as a skeptical person, I think that'd be a sight to see. So you're telling me that there's a chance? So you're telling me that there's a chance? So you're saying 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 there's a chance?